Today's video is sponsored by Paperlike, which makes drawing or writing on your iPad feel more like paper. Hey, it's Chris, and in this video, I'm gonna let you guys know which apps make the iPad Pro worth owning according to me. Now, scattered throughout, you're also gonna find out a little bit about how I've got my iPad Pro set up, and at the end of this video, you're gonna wanna stick around because I'm gonna be answering some of your comments and questions as well. So, what makes an app particularly suited to the iPad Pro? Well, probably some combination of utilizing the Apple Pencil, requiring more processing power, or making great use of the screen. Of course, you don't have to have an iPad Pro to use these apps. The budget iPad now has pencil support, and let's be honest, there's not an app out there that can really push this processor on the iPad Pro beyond its breaking point at least not yet. But the Pro does have the best Apple Pencil experience, and its crazy powerful processor makes it a great way to future-proof yourself, and of course, the 12.9-inch iPad Pro has the biggest, best iPad screen. Now, the apps that I tend to get the most out of, personally, fall into these four categories. Creativity apps like drawing, design, and photo editing apps, video production apps, writing apps, and productivity and organization apps. I say mostly because, of course, some of the apps that I like to use on my Pro defy those categories, and I'm gonna cover those mostly at the end. I absolutely expect you to have heard of several of these apps before, but I'm gonna do my very best to try to make sure that you at least learn something new along the way. I might succeed and I might fail, but we're gonna give it a try. Okay, so we're gonna proceed by going through the categories that I just mentioned a second ago and all the apps within those categories, starting with writing and note-taking, because I think that applies to probably the most people watching, like anybody could use those. Then we're gonna hit the creativity stuff, the more niche stuff, and what I'm gonna do is link up the timestamps to every app that I'm going to mention, it's gonna take me forever, down in the description. So if you wanna jump around to the stuff that you think is most interesting, please feel free. And now that I've gotten all that rambling out of the way, I'm actually gonna go through these pretty quickly, like 30 seconds for each thing. Are you ready? One of the coolest apps that exists for Apple Pencil users is Nebo by MyScript, which is such a great way to take handwritten notes. Most of the time, I like to type my notes out because it's just so much faster, but sometimes I get in a mood where I wanna write something because it just flows a little bit smoother and it makes me think in a different way. And when I'm in that mood, Nebo actually comes in really clutch. There's so many cool gestures that you can learn too, which makes it super intuitive if you do wanna ride this wave. When I wanna do some serious writing, I've been turning more and more frequently back to IA Writer, again. I used to use it a lot back in the day, and then I kinda switched over to Ulysses, but for the moment, I'm back. Because to me, this is sort of distraction-free writing, just about at its very best. It's true that Ulysses has more features, but for the kind of writing that I do, which is mostly scripts these days, which can range from 1,800 to 2,500 words on average, I consider less features to actually be a great feature. Apple Notes is still my go-to notes app, and yeah, I've tried both Notability and GoodNotes 5, and I like them both. I probably actually prefer GoodNotes over Notability, but Apple Notes is so integrated into iOS that it still makes the most sense for me. You know, like the ability to double tap on the lock screen with your Apple Pencil and jump right into creating a new note, that kind of thing is huge. And there's just something about Apple's apps. They seem to get features slower than competing third-party apps, but then they also seem to just work better in the long run. I know I've mentioned this before, but if you haven't seen my Apple Notes Tips video, I highly recommend that you go check it out for some additional context into why it's much cooler than most people think. MindNode is a mind mapping app that I actually am including in the writing section here because it's basically an extension of my writing process. It's where I brainstorm and play with ideas, especially complicated ideas before I try to make them more in depth. I use MindNode the most on the iPad Pro, but one thing I like about it is that I can reference the mind maps that I make there everywhere, on the Mac, on the iPhone, and even on my Apple Watch, which is sort of mind blowing. All right, let's hit the creative stuff next. Drawing, photo editing, and design. Procreate is the big one for me. If you've ever seen any of my drawings and videos on this channel, there's a 100% chance that it was done in Procreate up to this point. The thing about Procreate is that it's just so intuitive. It's powerful, but it's simple, which is the best combination. It's absolutely not overwhelming. 
I love the gestures. I love that it records what I'm creating and I can play it back as a time lapse. I love the brushes. I really love the quick shapes. And what's really crazy is that it has full PSD support. Darkroom is my go-to photo editing app right now. Not for easy stuff like filters, but for manual editing and more specifically for editing raw photo files. Darkroom is awesome on the iPhone, of course, but you really get true desktop class power on your iPad Pro. There's tons of keyboard shortcuts and personally, I like this design better than even Lightroom, even though I'm a Creative Cloud subscriber. This is one of the apps that I've gone ahead and paid extra for via in-app purchases for access to all the pro level tools so I can tune every single parameter of the photos that I shoot in Halide on my iPhone. Now, depending on when you started watching Daily Tech, you may or may not know that I studied design in college. So I still do some design for the business from time to time. And when I do on the iPad Pro, I'd like to use either Affinity Designer or Assembly. Affinity Designer is a super pro level vector design tool. So if you wanted to make something that's infinitely resizable like a logo or an icon or an illustration of some sort, this is a great, great app. On the other hand, sometimes you just want something that's simple and as easy to use as possible, like something even a beginner could use. And that is assembly, which is super fun and still gives you really great vector results. A full version of Photoshop is coming to the iPad soon, but it's not quite here yet. So there are two Photoshop-like programs that I like to use from time to time, Affinity Photo and Pixelmator. Both of these programs are great for things like quick photo corrections or photo retouching, or even more in-depth photo editing. Personally, I'm pretty comfortable with Pixelmator for things like design and effects and erasing objects from photos, changing the colors of specific objects and photos, just stuff like that. It's kind of hard for me to pick one of these apps over the other. I just feel like they're kind of better at different little things. Paper is one of the original apps that I ever downloaded and used and liked on an iPad. It's been around forever and I don't use it all that much anymore, but there are certain times when it's just the best option for me for quick sketches with that certain paper style. I don't really use this for notes at all and the tool set is pretty limited, but that's kind of what I like about it. You just can't go wild because there's not lots of options. You have to get to the point and you can't get carried away. Cinemagraph Pro is another app that's certainly been around for a long time and this counts as a pro level app here because the pricing is high, almost to the point of being outrageous. What this lets you do though, if you don't know, is create cinemagraphs or photos that are a combination of still and moving. Like a person that's sitting or standing perfectly still, but their hair is still waving. Like really creative stuff. What I like about it is that I can export the work that I do in 4K. And that alone is worth the price right there for someone like me who makes a living making 4K content. Speaking of 4K content, for video editing on my iPad Pro, of course I'm using LumaFusion. iMovie is surprisingly capable on the iPad, but LumaFusion is as close to Final Cut Pro as you can currently get, and it's really easy to use. If you're serious about video editing or if you're using some pro video accessories like a wireless hard drive, there's just no other option, really. LumaFusion also qualifies as a pro level app and has a rather high sticker price to match, but at least it's just a one-time purchase in this case. Another video related pro app that I use on my iPad Pro is Filmic Remote, which lets me monitor video that's being shot on an iPhone or I guess another iPad too, which is very rare, using the Filmic Pro camera app. So Filmic Pro on your iPhone can take your video to a whole nother level, but the one thing kind of holding it back from being a really pro camera in some cases is a screen that lets you see what you're shooting, especially if you're trying to shoot yourself. And that's when Filmic Remote on the iPad Pro is really awesome. So next, let me hit a few of the productivity and organizational apps that I use all the time on my iPhone iPad Pro that, yeah, you could use on other devices, but which are a huge part of my iPad Pro experience. Siri shortcuts are major helpers for me. I've got the dictate and share shortcut sitting right there in my dock, and I use that all the time when even typing is gonna be too slow. It's such a time saver and it's usually very accurate. So usually I just say whatever I need to and then copy and paste it wherever I want it to go. Another shortcut that I use all the time on my iPad Pro is one that takes me to my bookmark stories in Apple News because that's something that I reference quite frequently for my work. Drafts you guys are probably sick of hearing about from me, but I'm not gonna rehash it too much here other than to say, yeah, it's on my iPad Pro and yes, I use it all the time. Not for notes per se, but more to organize my thoughts and ideas the instant that they happen. Trello's here too, of course, because it's where I house the content idea pipeline for the team so that we're all on the same page about upcoming videos and sponsorships. Apple's file app also goes a long way towards making the iPad Pro feel a lot more pro. And I know a lot of people out there just aren't happy with it yet because it's not quite powerful enough for them, but I'm 
fairly satisfied with it. I mean, it's usable as is, but I won't mind when Apple upgrades it, hopefully in iOS 13. All right, real quick, let me just mention two other apps that don't really fit into any of the categories that I just mentioned, but which I use a lot and which are really cool. Nebo Calculator 2 is so awesome. It's a calculator, but awesome. So you just write out whatever you wanna know and it figures it out for you, which I really prefer to using an actual calculator app. What's great is that you can write out a bunch of stuff, figure out a bunch of stuff, and reuse portions of stuff so you can see multiple calculations on the screen at a time and you don't forget anything. It just feels a lot more natural. Recently, I just started using this and now I'm using it all the time for figuring out stuff for the business. Like honestly, you can call me a dork, but sifting through channel data and business data to find patterns and make projections is just about as good for me on some days as playing a video game. Do not at me. Numerics, I've talked about plenty of times before, but it's especially awesome on the iPad. Any iPad, actually, but my iPad Pro is the one that's sitting on my desk all the time, so when I'm not using it, I pull up my numerics dashboards to see business data at a glance. It's the only business dashboard like this that actually works with a bunch of YouTube data, so I can see that right alongside other social media info and even numbers from like PayPal or MailChimp or FreshBooks or what seems like a million other apps. What I love is how customizable it is. You can change colors, you can rearrange widgets, you can display stuff as charts, and whatever you do is also gonna be viewable on your other devices, from your Apple Watch to your Apple TV. Of course, I do use other apps on the iPad, but I wouldn't necessarily consider them apps that make the iPad Pro worth owning, and they're mostly just apps that let me consume content, like Netflix or YouTube, just entertainment stuff. From time to time, I do have some games loaded up on this iPad, but not very often. I mean, it makes sense on the one hand because this is such a powerful device, it's the obvious gaming choice when it comes to iPad gaming. But 99% of the time, I just have this geared towards working, towards the hustle, just towards getting stuff done. So if you're looking for a new iPad Pro, then check out today's sponsor, Paperlike, which is an accessory that makes it feel and sound like you're writing on real paper when you're using an Apple Pencil. Paperlike actually gives you more control when you're writing or drawing thanks to the paper-like resistance that it offers, and yeah, it really makes a big difference. Plus, it reduces glare, and thank goodness, fingerprints as well because the new iPad Pro shows those like crazy. Paperlike is great for anyone who uses apps like Notability or Procreate, and when you place an order, you'll get two Paperlike covers plus application accessories with free worldwide shipping and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. And you can pick one up using the link down in the description. If you found this video interesting or if you're really interested in the iPad Pro, I have so much more iPad Pro content to share with you guys. You should definitely check out my 11-inch iPad Pro review. You should definitely check out my iPad Pro tips and some other iPad Pro app recommendations that I've made. I'm gonna link all those up down in the description for you. All right, let's respond to some comments. And of course, if you want me to respond to one of your comments, then you gotta leave me something like a question or some sort of comment down in the comment section. Mons87 says, where can I get that wallpaper in this video? It doesn't matter what video. I get so many requests for like wallpaper. Where'd you get the wallpaper? And I wish I could respond to them all. I quit trying so long ago. So sorry, don't be offended if I didn't actually respond. But here's the thing. Most of the wallpaper in almost every video that's been recently published for like the last two years comes from Unsplash. Unsplash.com, get the Unsplash app, Unsplash. And B says, hey Chris, I just got my Series 4 40 millimeter Space Gray, congratulations, and I'm loving it. It's amazing, I've been watching all your Apple Watch videos, thank you. Thank you for putting so much effort into these videos, you're welcome, they're very helpful, I'm glad. I'm sure my watch will help me get healthier and fitter and will be useful in my everyday life, particularly for university. I do wanna say something about this. A lot of people, as they should, based on the marketing, think that the Apple Watch is gonna help them get healthier and fitter. And I think that that is true, but at the same time, it's not like a miracle thing. It's not like an instant thing. You still have to work at it. And I'm not saying that anybody, Ann or whoever, wouldn't, but I think that the power really comes from the data. Like, it's the same thing if you weigh yourself in the morning and you see like, whoa, it went up or whoa, it went down, you can act on that and you can feel motivated. And it's the same thing with the Apple Watch. That's what I love about it. And I love that it happens automatically. So yeah, I think it's gonna be helpful. <laughs> apple juice, good old apple juice, 
How many comments less would we have on the channel if it wasn't for apple juice? He says, I realize that I've not used the LTE feature on my watch for a while. I never want to leave my phone behind. So I think I'm going to cancel the LTE for now. And I totally get that. I said that, I don't know how many watch videos ago. Like I never want to be without my camera, which is also my phone. So totally get it. The thing is on the weekends for me, like sometimes I just want to be without my phone, like, or I need to be without my phone. It's just too addicting. You got to pull yourself away. It's at those times when I I like having the LT on my Apple Watch. Or, you know, like if you run out of battery or something, it's always good as a backup, but maybe it's not worth 10 bucks for a lot of people, maybe for most people. So totally get it. Jason Ong says, I hope you do HomePod alternatives and HomeKit suggestions slash recommendations. Actually, I haven't made a video about that yet and I may or may not, but I did make some slices or collections on mysliceapple.com. I'll link those up down below because it's exactly what you're looking for. HJ Parma says, how does the score app run on Apple Watch Series 4? It's very slow on Series 2 and it rarely refreshes in the background. Actually, on the Series 4, it seems to be running more or less flawlessly for me. So if you don't know, the score is an app that just lets you keep track of the score, the starting time or whatever you want of your favorite sports teams. And so I do use it for the Rockies, for the Broncos, for the Nuggets, just to stay on top of things. And sometimes the logos for the teams load just a little bit slower than the notification, but I'm talking like a fraction of the second. I could totally recommend using it on the Series 4. Okay, somebody asked me how many rings that I close on my Apple Watch making the last Apple Watch video. And the answer is a ton. I do this every video. I'm always flailing around and my Apple Watch is confused. It thinks that I'm exercising, but I'm not. So I'm kind of tricking it. And I just closed one right now. Literally, move goal achieved. I've reached my goals and all I did was sit here. Joanna Vale says, hey, got a little question. Can I record or attach any type of audio to know on an iPhone. I'm an Android user, but I was thinking about buying one and that makes all the difference to me. So the good news is you can. You can use like voice memo or any voice recording app probably and just share that into the Apple Notes app. So yeah, you can. I don't know that there's a native way to do it. Could be maybe something like that, but you can definitely do it. All right, that is it for the questions and comments for this round. Don't forget, you can follow at Daily Tech, spelled Daily T-E-K-K, -K, on Instagram and Twitter. And also, check out the description. There's so much good stuff down there, including more iPad Pro videos for you to consume and binge. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.